Nigeria is not yet ready for direct primary elections model, says the Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC. Nigeria's electoral system is still broken and needs a list of reforms. We'll take a look at those reforms and, of course, the checkered election system in Nigeria. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakul. The issue of Electoral Act Amendment Bill of the year 2021 dominated the political atmosphere in the later part of 2021. President Muhammad Buhari rejected the Electoral Act passed uh, to him by lawmakers. Uh, at first, he said nothing about the bill until a few days after the time stipulated by the Constitution for the assent or rejection of a bill uh, expired. Now, the president later declined his assent with his major reason being the inclusion of direct primaries for political parties. Despite some tough talk from the Senate, which threatened to override President Muhammad Buhari's veto of the bill, senators backed down, claiming that they needed to consult with their constituents. It's also said it would consult with the House of Representatives on the issue when plenary resumes this year. Well, our question now is, what is the way forward with this bill? Well, joining us to discuss this is a senior advocate of Nigeria, Moise Banire. Thank you very much, um, sir, for joining us on the show. Many people actually say that the electoral system in Nigeria is broken and, and that there are a list of urgent things that need to be fixed for us to be able to say that we have at least even scratched the surface of even having free, fair and credible elections. Um, do you think that the system in itself is broken or that there are things that we are yet to achieve to make sure that we uh, have a proper electoral system? <clears throat> Maybe not totally broken. On that day, it is broken, but not totally. It has not collapsed. Uh, but certainly, the kind of system that we have in place now cannot enjoy any credible election. That's the reality of the situation that we find ourselves. So as far as I'm concerned, we are on the first lane to total collapse of the electoral system. Mm. Um, so what are the, some of the things that you think you, I mean, you've been around for a long time. You should be able to tell one of the things or a few of those things that we need to do to, um, you know, get the reforms in place. But first and foremost, let's talk about the Electoral Act um, um, bill that is on the floor of the National Assembly. Many people thought last year uh, that the National Assembly was going to veto Mr. President um, and, and make sure that that bill was passed into law. But as we speak, that has not been the case. They're still saying they want to con consult with us Nigerians and they want to consult with members of the House of Representatives who were at the time uh, on re recess. What's your take on the whole drag? Well, I don't know. Is it in terms of the mode of primary or in terms of the refusal to assent? Which one of them? And of course, the, Mr. President, Mr. President had made his reservations known. Many people are saying that it's not enough reason for that bill not to be passed into law. In fact, there are people, I, 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 I talked to a member of the House of Representatives, um, and, and he's a PDP member. He said that this is a ploy for the presidency and members of the APC to bypass this or keep this particular bill until elections. Uh, when the elections are getting close, then they'll say it's a bit too close for them to rush into it. Well, I'm of the view in the first instance that uh, the president should uh, ought to, and in fact, rightly decline the assent to the bill based on the EU of the direct primaries. I do not subscribe to the legislature or the draft legislation at all, particularly in terms of compelling political party to adopt a particular move. So to that extent, I think I'm in concurrence with the president on that point. Uh, as for the issue of whether something else could have been done, the truth of the matter is that the bill came holistically, so it's difficult to start isolating the president on his own could not have isolated the provision relating to direct primary and then signed the orders. So the only thing, the option that is left for the National Assembly, of course, is to expand that provision and represent for assent in the circumstances. The president could not have done so on his own. And I think that is the right position. 
So you're saying that you do not necessarily agree with the issue of direct primaries, and, and that has been an issue that has been debated over time. But the inter-party um, um, uh, advisory council are here saying that they want the president to actually assent to this bill. So it means that, and I'm guessing that IPAC is made up of different political parties. It means that maybe the political parties represented by IPAC do not necessarily think that direct primaries may be a problem of sorts. They're looking at other issues like, um, you know, the e-transfer of, of, of votes uh, to electronic transfer of votes, you know, um, they're looking at other issues that are in this particular uh, bill other than the direct primaries. Now, INEC has also come out to say that if we were to go the way of direct primaries, then the burden of the finance burden would be on political parties. And I always ask, are political parties ready for this? Again, let's not forget, there is a cap for political party spending, even though there's not necessarily been a check and balance as to how much monies are being expended by these political parties. Will this not also in, um, you know, cost the political parties to spend above the cap that has been um, stated within the bill? You see, there are so many issues that are involved in your observation now. First and foremost, let me say that the, what they are suggesting is impossible for the president to isolate uh, the direct primary provision and assign the rest. You know, that is an impossibility, but I can't say to a large extent that there are so many other areas that requires attention that are contained in the draft bill that should be considered. That's why I said that if truly the National Assembly meant well for the system, what ought to be done as a matter of urgency is to isolate that, represent the remnant to the president for assent. Then we can start agitating the uh, issue of direct or not direct. But for me, the issues that are militate against the adoption of the primary as the only way of nomination are so many. In fact, in the first instance, I disagree that it's a subject of legislation. I disagree to them fundamentally. It is an issue that I believe is within the freedom of the political parties. That's number one. And that is why if we, there's no political party in Nigeria today that does not have a provision allowing the different methods of nomination, that is to say, the direct, indirect, and consensus, none of them. So what we are indirectly saying is that to the president even uh, assign that particular bill, it implies that all the political parties will have to go and convene a convention urgently to amend their constitution to reflect that. Mm -hmm. And the cost of constitution is not a small amount, and the logistic is not that uh, uh, it's not something. It's not a Tea Party on its own. But beyond that, I believe seriously, and I say without fear of the equivocation, that what is required is not legislating the mode of party. The fundamentals are the problem that we have with the transparency in the conduct of the primary. What are these fundamentals? One, let a political party come out and tell me that we have a credible membership register. Let any one of them come out. That is the fundamental thing that needs to be addressed by INEC and if possible by extension, the National Assembly to truly mean well. Every political party must have a credible remembership register that has integrity and that is open to everybody to see. That's number one thing that ought to be addressed. Whether you adopt direct or indirect, the truth is that if your membership register is not credible, you are wasting your time. I remember the last time That's you and I spoke um, on the APC, uh, the proposed convention that the APC was going to have, and, and you know, amidst the inter-state, uh, you know, primary issues or congresses that they had, and you it kept be, yeah. you kept saying that you kept asking if the APC did indeed have a register, and for me, I'm wondering, for the APC who did a nationwide registration for re-registration for their members, one would believe that they would have a register, one that reflects all the information of their truly registered members. But here you are saying or implying, not just about the APC, but political parties in Nigeria, that they do not have credible registers. What, what does that even say well, about the whole uh, inter-democratic process within the parties, let alone the people that they throw up at the end of the day to run for these offices? Uh, that is the issue. That is the very first thing that needs to be addressed. As I today, for example, APC embarked on what I call a membership drive jamboree that led to purported collation of raw data 
All these raw data are still lying in the various state and local government across the place. Nobody has gone to have put them together. Nobody has challenged, nobody has verified the authenticity of all these names that have been put into the letter. No filtration process, no identification process, nothing like that has happened. So how do you conduct either direct or indirect without a membership register? It's a complete waste of time. That's the first thing. But let's even assume without conceding that there is even a credible member booth register. What are the identification process? How do we identify the right members that are entitled to, to vote? This is still lacking equally. You find that, that where you have direct primary, you're having all the members of the party going to a particular venue. That means the presupposition is that each person going to that venue is a member or valid member of the party. How do you identify them? That again is lacking. These are the areas to pay serious attention to. You must have a credible member. You must have an uh, identification process that is able to say this is our member, that is not our member. Otherwise, it's usually as it's usually a jack. That's why you have bloated figure. See what happened in Anambra, for example. Look at the figures that came out. Look at the one that came out from the election. We've had this in several states like that. So for me, those are the two fundamentals. Then the third aspect to address is the issue of the monitoring and supervision. Is INEC truly monitoring anything now? What is the extent of, look at, there was a judgment given recently on Anambra. It was by the grace of INEC that one of the, the agreed members was able to prove his case that no primary took place. Mm. So to do that in all the wars of the Federation under direct primary is going to be an Aquilian, so that it's not an impossible task for INEC. Apart from the logistic, the financial implication, even for the parties that said, how you come to the fourth aspect of it, security. Are you able to provide security at all the venues? Again, that is impossible again. So there are so many of that can continue to multiply all those challenges that are associated with uh, direct primary. But even assuming without considering that that's the way to go. Even in terms of the indirect primary, mind you, the only difference between direct and indirect primary is one is a single transaction. The other is a double transaction. The first one, all members go directly. The second one, indirect, they will first go to elect the delegate. The delegate will now elect those who will be the party, the, the candidates of the party. So whoever would you take, direct, direct will still take place. So for me, what is most important to be addressed are those issues that I highlighted earlier. And we must be addressed if we want to have any credible nomination process in this country. Otherwise, we continue, continue to be garbage in, garbage out. And the quality that we have will continue to be challenged within our system. Let me talk about the internal democracy within our political parties in Nigeria. Now, IPAC, again, is mauling over the e, uh, idea of establishing uh, an African Institute for Demo uh, Democracy. And this is basically or purely to train politicians. Now, uh, in Nigeria, you hear people say that they're career politicians and there are people that are politicians who are made um, as by circumstance. Uh, is this an idea that should be explored? And, and what change do you think this br would bring if it were to come into fruition? Well, in the first instance, like the, the distinction you trying or uh, you struggle to draw is between those we call professional politicians and professional in politics. The professional in politics are those with alternate vocations. They have their jobs that they are doing. They are just interested in good governance. That's why you find them in their the political arena. But the other ones, they have no job. They are ever desperate for political office. That's the only means of survival. Politics is their industry. Those who want, they can go to any level, they can do anything to get to their destination. So for those ones, you are not likely to get anything better with them. But the truth of the matter is that because a lot of good people stay away from the political arena, we continue to have these charlatans in, in, in surplus within the political. And they are the people that are usually the advocates of all the vices you, are, you find associated with the nomination process, particularly at the general election eventually. Mm -hmm. So the idea of having such an institution, of course, INEC has one already. There is one under INEC. Is, uh, to what extent has it gone? Uh, the last time I heard about it was that they have challenge of funding. Mm -hmm. Of course, they cannot do it alone. We need the civil society organization. We need the people. We need the, the media, particularly, to educate the people on all these things. For instance, I believe that there are so many sectors to address. Just this year in my own column now, I'm writing several letters out to the politicians, to the electorate, to the judiciary, to the uh, security, and so on and so forth. All of us must be 
interested and must participate in these processes. That is the only way to sanitize. It's the murky water as it is right now. And it's not likely to give us any good product at the end of the day. Hmm. Finally, um, some pundits have also, you know, canvassed for INEC to be um, um, independent in the true sense of it. Uh, they're, they're, they're asking that there be um, the removing of the president's powers to appoint, you know, the chairman and members uh, of the commission and making appointments. They're also uh, talking about the, the, that the fact that this should be the job of the National Judicial Council. Um, is this something that we can make happen in five years? I mean, we've we hear all kinds of interesting ideas, but the reality of the, the fact is, will we ever agree for these things to happen? Because INEC is called independent, but is it really independent? Because this is why point, fingers are always pointed to INEC and its credibility. Well, the truth of the matter is that that idea, that proposal has been on ground for some time now, since the Yaradwa days. It was the, the uh, result of the Justice in Waste panel yes. that came out with several recommendations to make INEC independent and election credible. But it has not seen the light of day. Nothing has happened. I am of the view that we can't toy with that idea. But in toying with the idea, even the national judicial country itself needs to be restructured constitutionally. It's a constitutional body, but the composition itself needs to be tampered with to ensure and guarantee that at the end of the day, the integrity of the people there is equally impeccable. It's at that point that we can then saddle them with that responsibility. But there are a lot of other areas that require a lot of intervention, particularly stemming from the waste report, which, of course, is gathering dust somewhere uh, in the country right now. Okay. Now, finally, um, we always talk about these things and we talk about the Constitution Amendment. All this it, it comes back to the table of the members of the National Assembly. These same members who are politicians, who sometimes have, um, you know, ambitions in the midst of trying to draw up these documents. So, of course, interests come to play. But then when we're talking about sanitizing the electoral process, again, we cannot do it without these guys. So how do we ever envisage in the future that this might be a thing if every time we talk about this issue, interests arise and, and these politicians don't seem to be prioritizing the sanitization of the system? Well, particularly, I do not expect much at any point in time from the National Assembly in terms of any serious electoral amendment. I do not expect much. But with the pressure of the people themselves, I think we can get somewhere with them. We can, for example, take the issue of electronic transmission. We were all on their neck until they reversed themselves and took the right route. And the same thing we can see do. The power of the people, the sovereignty of the people is still there. So we only need to educate our people and make sure that we all stand by our convictions at all times. They are supposedly our servants. We must be able to dictate to them what we want. They are not our masters. And I said we agree to that at the point in time, and not too sure that we should expect anything magical or miraculous from the National Assembly, particularly in terms of electoral amendments. You write this of that. They are interest for us before any other interest. That's the reality. Well, Moise Barnire is a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate your thoughts. A pleasure. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. It's still Plus Politics. We'll take a short break now. And when we come back, we will be discussing the electoral challenges, uh, of course, of the electoral reforms in Nigeria that we're hoping for. And, of course, hoping that they do not replicate themselves in 2023. We'll be right back. After this break.